Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, The Medium. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins in the Isin region, where a Thai documentary team chooses to investigate a local psychic's life, among other numerous mediums in Thailand. The team decides to follow the Isin's local medium, named Annie Psychic, who is believed to be possessed by the Bayan spirit, a local deity whom the townspeople worship. Bayan is an ancestral god found at the top of the mountains, where people trek for hours to pray. Bayan has possessed the women in Annie Psychic's family, starting from her grandmother, to her aunt, then her. But before Bayan chose her, he wanted to possess Annie Psychic's older sister. However, the sister refused to be a medium and changed to Christianity. So the Bayan god transferred to Annie Psychic. The cameraman then asks Annie Psychic if her body trembled and her voice changed after being possessed. Annie Psychic laughs and says that those scenarios only happen on television and movies. Every day, people come to Annie Psychic for treatment, blessings, and wishes. And when they do, they always bring an offer for the Bayan god. However, she can only cure diseases that doctors cannot fix. Andy Psychic also shares that she did not want to be a psychic, but after she tried to kill herself for getting so ill that no doctors could cure her, she accepted Bay and God in her body. Since then, Andy Psychic has dedicated her life to serving Bay and God. Andy Psychic decides to take the interview team to the wake of her sister's husband, who just died from lung cancer. Andy Psychic shares that misfortune always befalls the men of the family. His grandfather was beaten to death by a staff, his father committed suicide after getting caught for insurance fraud, and his son died from a motorbike accident. Annie Psychic's sister was left with a daughter, Mink, the first person who saw her dad die. Mink's uncle is also there at her father's funeral with other relatives and her friends. After the mourners leave, only the close relatives and Mink's friends are left at the wake. Mink is drinking with her friends, while older men are gambling. Then out of the blue, Mink outbursts and gets aggressive at one of the older men. The family immediately stops Mink, as she shouts insulting words to the man. It takes a while before Mink calms down, but Annie's psychic is suspicious, whether it is because of the alcohol or something else. Later that night, as Annie's psychic prepares to sleep, she finds Mink near her, staring at their old blind woman neighbor. After minutes of staring, the old woman leaves, and Mink gets to sleep. The following day, people murmur outside, as the paramedic takes out the old woman's corpse. No one knows the cause of her death. Annie's psychic then notices Mink leaving the scene. So she goes after her, and finds her standing in front of the back door. Annie Psychic repeatedly calls her, but Mink dismisses her. After the funeral, Annie Psychic goes to Mink's room, and starts searching for something. The sister tries to stop her as she is confused. But Annie Psychic continues to go through Mink's belongings, until she finds something in her closet. It is a turmeric garland believed to drive spirits away. Just then, Mink rushes in, and pushes them out of her room. Annie Psychic immediately questions her sister if Mink has had any strange dreams or symptoms lately, but she does not answer and lets Annie Psychic out of the house. The following day, Mink invites the team to her workplace, the personnel office. Mink seems to love and dedicate herself to her job, as she enjoys helping people out. The crew asks Mink's opinion about her auntie being a psychic. Despite being a descendant of a psychic family, Mink thinks that a medium is fake and worthless. She even makes fun of the hand gestures that people do when they serve Bay and God. Simultaneously, Mink's mother is interviewed by the rest of the crew. They ask if she still remembers her feelings when Bane God is about to possess her. Mink's mother shares that the time when she had just turned 20 years old, she got very ill, and her menstruation lasted for months. She tells them after she rejected the possession of God, she witnessed Bane God possess her sister Annie Psychic. The mother feels guilty whenever she sees her sister, as she is why Annie Psychic became a psychic. So the interview crew asks what she will do if the Bane God moves onto her, which offends the mother. After leaving her work, Mink goes straight to the dressing room of the town and tries on her dress for a town celebration. As she looks in the mirror, Mink notices a pair of children's shoes. Mink puts them on despite being undersized for her, but she enjoys wearing his shoes. Later that night, the crew interviews a friend of Mink at the bar. She shares that Mink has been acting strange recently and even shows a video as proof. They were at the mall and Mink acted childish, like riding a children's machine and even pushing kids who got close to her. After interviewing her, the friend returns to the bar, where Mink leaves her as she is too drunk. So the cameraman follows Mink when she goes inside her workplace and sleeps on the bench. The following day, her office mates find Mink inside the office. Her co-worker wakes her up and instructs her to clean herself for work. Mink notices a man staring at her as she stands, especially at her smelly lower body. Mink looks down and finds herself bleeding uncontrollably between her legs. Mink immediately runs to the restroom and frantically cleans the blood from her legs. After that, she goes home, as she has no clothes to change. Her mother repeatedly asks her what happened, but Mink remains silent and locks herself in her room. 
So later that day, Min's mother talks with the uncle, as she is concerned about the recent changes in Ming's behavior. The uncle thinks that Ming's symptoms are similar to Annie's psychic in her, so he suggests letting Annie's psychic do the acceptance ceremony. However, the mother does not want Ming to be a psychic. The following day, Ming experiences excruciating abdominal and vaginal pain. During her commute, Ming suddenly curses and slaps an old woman staring at her. The other passengers immediately stop her and push her off the vehicle. But that is not all. She does not go home and mumbles insulting words as she drinks alcohol. Later that night, the interview crew share the footage and other information with Annie Psychic. The following day, Annie Psychic pretends that her bracelet is missing to get her sister's help. As Ming's mother goes upstairs to look for it, Annie Psychic and the uncle immediately knock on Ming's door. As Ming opens the door, Annie Psychic immediately asks her if she has heard strange voices lately. However, before Ming can answer, the mother interrupts them. So Annie Psychic has no choice but to leave. Later that day, the mother accompanies Mink to the hospital to get medicine for the piercing pain in her head, back, and even her genitals. However, the doctor cannot find the cause. The interview crew then ask her if she has had any strange dream recently. Mink reluctantly shares a scenario that repeatedly plays in her dream. She sees a big man with a chest full of spells, licking the big long knife he is holding, while there is another man on the ground with his head beheaded. The next day, Mink returns to work, but she suddenly gets nauseated, adding to her abdominal pain. She immediately runs to the restroom, and her cries of pain are heard by everybody nearby. Although in great pain, Mink still tries to work, but her bad luck seems to be just starting. Her boss calls her to his office and fires her. This angers Mink, so she immediately gets her stuff and leaves. She tries wearing a white dress for the event. While the artist prepares his stuff to do her hair, Mink's behavior suddenly changes. She looks in the mirror and eats her nails until her teeth are stained with blood. The artist interrupts her, causing Mink to return to herself. She immediately leaves the booth and sees what she has done to herself. Later that day, as they parade in the streets, Ming's behavior changes again. She ignores her friend and family and starts throwing decorations at the crowd. The following day, Ming goes to her work like she did not get fired yesterday. As the boss sees her, he immediately calls security and instructs them to drag Ming out. As the guards take Ming off the building, the boss shares his reason with the team. He lost something, so he went to check the CCTV footage, hoping to find it. However, he discovered Mink having some smelly office workout with multiple men at work. Later that night, as the mother gets home after church time, she finds Mink sitting on the bathroom floor, stained with her blood. She is unconscious from all the blood she has lost from cutting her wrist, so she immediately calls the uncle for help. And fortunately, they rush Mink to the hospital just in time. Andy Psychic visits her niece at the hospital, where she informs the mother that Mink cannot do the acceptance ceremony, as it is not Bay and God that has possessed Mink's body. After that, Annie Psychic returns to the house with the uncle. They go inside the room of Mink's brother. Their Annie Psychic discovers that Mink and her brother had an ancestral relationship, causing him to commit suicide. Annie Psychic then goes to the forest in front of a tree, where Mink's brother hanged himself. Annie Psychic concludes that the brother is trying to kill Mink, so she prays in front of the tree for days, to convince the brother not to. She spends days and nights praying to Mink's brother, while the mother and the uncle take Mink to a shaman to do the acceptance ceremony without Annie Psychic's knowledge. The uncle thinks that Bay and God is punishing Ming for refusing to be a psychic when she was a maiden. Before the ceremony starts, the uncle secretly texts Annie Psychic about Ming's mother's plan. The ceremony begins, but Annie Psychic rushes in shortly after and stops it. Suddenly, Ming takes the camera from a cameraman and repeatedly hits her mother until she loses consciousness. Andy Psychic immediately stops her, but then she suddenly runs away. Annie Psychic goes after her, but Ming quickly vanishes without a single trace. Ming's family and friends immediately do a search hunt, but hours have passed, and they still cannot find her. As things worsen, Annie Psychic and Ming's mother go up to the mountain and pray to Bay and God. After that, they return to the house and go inside Ming's room. A foul smell welcomes them, but the family dismisses it and searches for the things that Ming carried home from various places. After that, Annie Psychic returns to the forest and performs a ritual to pray for Ming's brother not to take Ming. She spends nights and days praying, hopeful to find where Ming was taken. On the other hand, the mother and the uncle go to the police, as they have a lead about Mink. A taxi driver shares his dashcam, as Mink became his passenger. Mink steps out of the car in the middle of a grass field. The driver repeatedly calls her, but she keeps walking away, so the driver maneuvers his vehicle. However, as he drives in the opposite direction, Mink is suddenly there. That is the only lead they have so far on Mink, so the police will let them know if there is any update. However, a month has passed, and they have not heard anything yet. The police do not have any update, and Annie's psychic still cannot discover where Mink is. 
Then one day, as Andy Psychic performs a ritual, black liquid comes out from an egg as she breaks it. Andy Psychic realizes that Min's brother has nothing to do with anything happening. So she goes to the last place where Mink was seen alive, and goes through the tall grasses. She finds a dark, abandoned building in the middle of the field. She goes inside, looking and searching every corner and every floor, until she finally finds Mink on the fifth floor. Mink is unconscious and covered with dirt as she lies on the floor. Any psychic immediately takes her to the hospital, where the doctor informs them that Mink is fine. However, there are symptoms of malnutrition and dehydration. The next day, Annie Psychic goes up to the mountains to make a sacrifice, only to be mortified, as she discovers that someone has beheaded the Bayan statue, a mockery sign to the sacred idol. On the other hand, Mink has been discharged from the hospital, but she is far from her old self. Mink suddenly becomes aggressive when Annie Psychic visits her, and growls like an animal. She taunts her Annie to guess who they are, and then Mink suddenly rips off her shirt. She then gets sexually aggressive, forcing sexual advancement on her uncle. Annie Psychic and the mother immediately hold her, and Annie Psychic cites a prayer on her. However, it only angers the possessor, so Annie Psychic asks to tie Mink on the bed. After that, they all leave the room. Later that day, the family takes Mink to Annie Psychic's shaman friend. One hold at her, shaman informs them that Mink is possessed by hundreds of evil spirits. It turns out that Mink's family's ancestors slaughtered hundreds of people, and one dying man cursed the family. Shaman adds that the acceptance ceremony has made Mink a vessel for the spirits, so they decide and prepare themselves to exercise Mink. The crew also install night vision cameras around the house for surveillance. Days before the ritual, the evil spirits start to get more aggressive towards Mink's family. At first, Mink just messes up the house, but then every scenario worsens. Mink crawls like an animal and eats raw meat from the refrigerator. The next night, she boils their family dog alive and eats it. She also sneaks into her uncle's room and creeps at his wife, who suddenly wakes up from a stomachache. The crew daily let the family watch the footage, until they see from the video that Mink took her uncle's baby son one night. The uncle immediately runs to the house, and finds the crib empty, causing him to panic, as he has witnessed what Mink is capable of. They all go to the fields, and after a few minutes of anxious searching, the uncle finds his son lying on the ground. He quickly runs to his son, and fortunately, the boy is unharmed. However, they notice Mink looking mischievously at them nearby. She promptly runs to the cameraman with a knife, who quickly dodges her attack. However, the knife lands on the uncle's hand, who is under Mink. They immediately take off Mink over her uncle, and locks her in her room. The day before the ritual, the mother repeatedly contacts her sister, but she fails. So she goes to Annie Psychic's room, and finds her unconscious, and not breathing on her bed. Her death is sudden, and no one knows what or who the reason is. Despite that, Shaman proceeds with the ritual. His student surrounds the building with spells, instances, and other holy things. They also do the same on the fifth floor of the abandoned building where the evil spirits go into Mink's body. Shaman plans to use Mink's mother as a vessel, transfer the evil souls to her body, exercise her, and put those spirits in a sealed jar. They cannot use Mink, as she is too violent and dangerous for them. Shaman guides Mink's mother to the abandoned building, as she has a cloth over her head filled with prayers. After that, Shaman begins the ritual, and after a few minutes of mumbling prayers, blood starts to come out from her mouth and in between her legs, Shaman immediately removes the cloth, and she kneels as she pukes out the evil spirits in the jar. She immediately loses consciousness from the intense effect. Meanwhile, some of them are left with Mink at home. They guard Mink's room, as Shaman had instructed them not to open it, until the exorcism is done. However, the uncle's son mysteriously transfers to Mink's room, causing the wife to tear the holy spell that kept Mink locked up in her room. This causes the ritual to fail, and Shaman to commit suicide as he holds the sealed jar. The wife breaks into the room, only to be stabbed in the neck by Mink. The cameraman and the student immediately attempt to leave, but Mink stops them. The cameraman quickly runs upstairs, and hides as he hears Mink kill the student. However, Mink soon finds the cameraman, ending his filming life. Concurrently, the power goes out of the building, causing a blackout. The crew outside uses their camera flash to film, only to be horrified as they witness Shaman's students get possessed. The students growl like an animal before attacking the crew, and killing them by biting off their flesh contaminated with diabetes. Inside the building, Mink's mother regains consciousness, and claims that Bayan God has possessed her. She smiles widely as she praises Bayan God, instilling a little hope in them. She instructs them to get the broken jar, as they need to lock up the evil spirits again. They oblige the mother, so she leads the ritual. But then, she laughs like a crazy person, and turns the instances upside down. Chaos and violence continue, as Mink's uncle and the remaining students in the building get possessed. The uncle suddenly attacks a cameraman, bites his contaminated flesh off, and then commits suicide by jumping off the building. The remaining cameraman tries to leave the building, 
but he runs into Mink and the possessed students on his way out. Left with no choice, the cameraman returns to the room and hides in darkness. He turns on the night vision settings of the camera and films Mink and her mother. The mother holds Mink's head and chants a prayer, but she gets distracted as Mink calls her mom. Mink then chokes her before pouring gas on her. Suddenly, Mink turns around to the cameraman, ending his filming life too. Despite the mother's desperate pleas, Mink puts on her fire. The camera focuses on a voodoo doll that has needles stuck in it, with Mink's family name as its label. The film ends with a flashback interview of Annie's psychic, days before the exorcism ritual. Annie's psychic is overwhelmed by the recent events, and she starts to question whether Bane God is really within her before breaking down off-screen, as she too does not know what will happen. This implicates that the family's weakening faith in Bane God is taken advantage of by the haunting spirits, and hence comes the slaughter. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.